it's me, Ron Funches. You should probably know that from press and play. But <laughs> in case you forgot, here's your intro. Uh, thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for watching it on YouTube. If you choose to do that, please make sure you subscribe, hit that little button, because it just helps me one day maybe get a plaque or something. I don't know. Other than that, I don't really recall about what it would be good for. Um, other than that, you can go to patreon.com and become a Patreon supporter patreon.com slash getting better with ron if the podcast has helped you in some way uh like the people who told me the manager at patweet who told me he saved his life um and then gave me a free dessert i love that and if you want to find a way to give me a free dessert you can put a few dollars in the patreon patreon.com slash getting better with ron um if you don't have money to do that you can watch some of the projects that i'm in loot on apple TV Plus. Uh, you can watch Harley Quinn on HBO Max. You can watch, I'm in an episode of Single Drunk Female on Hulu if you want to watch. That's a pretty good show. So check that out. Um, and then we have a live show that I do with Blair Saki at the Comedy Store every month. Our next show will be May 20th. Uh, if you're in Hollywood, California, go to the Comedy Store uh, and, and get your tickets. You can go to ronfunches.com. Also, I'm getting ready to start my tour we're taking fun voices on the road if you want to see me and blair saki doing comedy in your city instead of at the comedy store we're bringing it to you this summer if we're going to be in denver we're going to be in madison wisconsin we're going to be in chicago probably we're going to be in so many places i'm going to get all the dates up to you soon but you can go to ronfunches.com right now go buy some tickets for my summer tour so i can add some dates make some extra money i would love that also you can get my shoes the Ron Funches Pumas are available at uh, footlocker.com and Champ Sports. You can get those. Just go give it a Google. We'll put the link in the in the podcast description as well. All the proceeds go to Next for Autism, which finds a uh, wonderful job placement and programs for kids with autism as they transition into adult life and that's very important to me. And plus they're just beautiful killer shoes. So give them um, a uh, purchase. And it makes me just happy as hell. Other than that, Let's get to the podcast. I hope you're feeling strong. Oh, I hope you're feeling brave. Hope you're feeling loved. Oh, so loved. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> you like it? I hope you're grateful for it. I hope you're enjoying your life and all the beautiful things that are a part of it. The struggles, the obstacles, the successes, the victories, the failures, even those as well that you are enjoying your life to the fullest and just being in the moment and that's hard for most people it's hard for me we're always focused on either the future what could be what um stresses that could pop up uh making sure we have enough money for the future or sometimes we're focused on the past the mistakes that we've made the choices that we made the things that we said that we wish we could take back uh but you gotta be able to either a Forgive yourself from the past or B, know that the future will always come and you got to be happy with the moment, be happy with the present and just live your life because that's where the magic is. Things always change. The will of life is always moving. And if you're focused on it, you're going to miss miss so many things. I think of that as my son is uh, Teddy's getting ready to turn one years old. And I've been so happy and so blessed that even with all the stress, even with dealing with separation and the pending divorce, that we've still been active parents and, and present parents and, and um, aware that this time is so short because he's already growling and, and, and looking like he could walk at any time. He's already talking a bunch and soon he'll be going to school and, and having his own little place in the world. And it just, all these things in your life, whether it's being a parent, whether it's being a child yourself, whether it's being uh, in your 20s or whatever it is, they move so quickly. So you got to embrace all aspects of it. Be okay with making mistakes, being okay with being passionate, with being overly emotional sometimes. Just know that you're still figuring it out and you don't have to be a perfect person at any age. I know people in their 50s and 60s and 70s who still struggle with their own personal issues still struggle with life still struggle with relationships and 
so there is no timetable for this. There's no timetable to being successful. If you're successful in your 50s, it's going to probably feel just as good, if not better, if you were to make it in your 20s. Because you're more grateful for it. And the money spends anyway. So try to be as present as possible in your life. Take a moment to meditate if you can. And just be say something that you're grateful for. Me, I'm grateful for my health and my freedom, for my ability to, as much as pain as it's been dealing again with the separation, that I'm able to now really enjoy my life and do what I want to do and and be around whoever I want to be around or um, spend my focus however I choose to, and that's my responsibility and my um my burden to carry and I like I like having that on me instead of having to check in on someone or making sure that it's okay with somebody else. I know relationships uh can be a lot of give and take and a lot of compromising, but I find myself sometimes being willing to bend too much to somebody else's will. And it's been now cool with dating and stuff on occasion where I'm like, no, nah, I don't wanna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna I wouldn't enjoy that. Or even while I'm focusing on my health or I tell people like, eh, normally I'd like to go to dinner, but I'm really focused on my health right now. And so I'm not doing much dinner dates. If you want to go get a tea, if you want to come with me into the comedy store, if you want to um, just play video games, that's what I like to do. And normally there was a time where I'd be like, well, whatever you want to do, I'll fit into the mode that you want to do. And now I'm really into like, I'm, I'm happy to treat you nice. I'm happy to go see you where, and stuff. But it's got to be within something that I'm interested in. <laughs> it's something I'm about doing. And that's a strong shit for me. And I like it. And I hope it continues to grow. I'm really focusing, again, like I said, on my health. Uh, I put on a little bit of weight just from being stressed out. Got the the, the uh, fast food that crept its way back in my life. Eating the occasional Taco Bell. Telling myself it was okay because I only got the vegetarian stuff. But I know it's all processed junk. So I got to fucking get my shit together. <laughs> and I'm really working on that right now. I'm really excited about, I'm going to see a nutritionist on um, next Tuesday. So we'll talk about that on the podcast and see what lessons I'm learning from that. Um, and I just really am trying to make a goal to te- treat myself with the utmost value and respect and to treat my body as something that is uh, worth feeling with good fuel and worth praise and worth joy and, and that I'm healthy and happy and I look good and I feel good and I feel strong. And I'm just trying to build on that for the for the rest of the year. Um not much really happened this week. I like when things happen so then I can really dive into them for you. But I just been dealing with trying not to be overly worked. Um adjusting my schedule as I can to make sure I get a nice balance between um work family life and my own personal free time and fun and for a long time for me and i think that's what for a lot of people i always put the personal time and the free time um on the back burner and just work 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 a lot or go to work and then just go see teddy and then come back home and go to work and well seeing teddy is restful for me and joyful for me also it takes a lot of focus and you gotta be on him and make sure he's not you know, eating toilet paper and stuff. So I got to remember that I still got to have joy for me, go out and listen to music, go out and see some comedy. That's not just me doing comedy and um, just be an active participant in this world and not just a worker. I think a lot of us, you know, we inadvertently get into that matrix role where we're just battery packs for the capitalist society. And and you got to remember that you're here to have joy and you're here to have fun and you're here to rest. And and if you need to take a nap, if you need to uh, go see dumb movies and get stoned all day because 420 is coming up, go do that. That's valuable. I was talking with Caroline Ray at the comedy store the other day. And hopefully, I don't know if we've had her on the podcast. If not, we should book her. Um, but she said some really fun stuff about just enjoying the fun parts of life that if you're, 
uh meet somebody that you don't even you know if you're like hey this person i don't see a relationship with this person uh but they're nice to me and they're kind to me and i if you meet somebody in rome and you're like oh look at this beautiful italian person that i've never seen and part of you is going to go like well I'm, there's no future here and there's nothing there, so why would i even but then would you rather be on your deathbed saying i didn't fuck this italian person or would you rather be like i did go to italy and fuck this person and i think that's how you gotta live your life in general how you feel on your deathbed and that's how and i hate to keep going back to my marriage and stuff but i'm like that i want to be on my deathbed being like oh i wasn't that happy with things but i did the best for my family and to make sure that they were happy or do i want to be like i gave it my best shot things didn't work out and i made sure that i was still happy and that my son was taken care of and i had a good life and now um, I get to have sex with people who are legitimate models and stuff. That seems more fun for me. This is a real specific situation, but <laughs> but it could be you too. I don't know. <laughs> Let's get into the podcast. I don't got much more to say. Uh, we got a great episode with a good friend of mine. Uh, I enjoy her work so much in comedy and space and just being a, a, a positive, a chaotic good in this world. Uh, you, She can see her upcoming in a Netflix series whose name I don't even remember that she gave us. But it doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. It's not out for a while, so this is a bad plug. Um, <laughs> she's got her own shows that she does at Dynasty Typewriter Monthly uh, called Self Help Me. She is the creator of Comedy Crossing, the Animal Crossing comedy show that was super fucking cool during the pandemic and no one helped a lot of people out. Uh, and she's just a real hilarious, talented person. Uh, please enjoy this conversation with Jenny Yang. Enjoy it. This is this is what they call the millennial uh, millennial urge to wear a, a jumpsuit. Is that a millennial thing? <laughs> I, I feel like it is for women. It's like you're all in the Air Force. <laughs> we all look like we're uh, grease monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You all look like Final Fantasy mechanics. <laughs> which is one of my kinks. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, do what you gotta do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope we're recording. <laughs> yeah. I was checking out your collectibles room. Okay. I hope that's okay. I was just yeah. I was just snooping around. This is sure. a great house. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love a hillside house. I love a secluded area. Me too. I love a peekaboo. <laughs> You're like, oh, where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> I like it. And it's like so close to everything. Yeah, it really has been a godsend for me as far as I can. Nothing's too further. Now I'm real spoiled where I'm like, oh, it's more than 15 minutes right. for me to get to it. And I don't want to go anymore. No, totally. Yeah, that's where I live right now. How are we looking, Christian? Yeah. You want to turn off the computer? Is that going to be an issue? Okay. This is awesome. Thanks for having me. Are we getting better? I hope so. <laughs> Are you getting better? I, I was looking think, yeah. through I was looking through your Instagram just to like see about your life life mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Got some life changes happening recently. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the way to put it? Is that yeah, is that the tactful way to put it? Sure. What did you you tell me what you saw? I saw like a very uh, like a note that said in all transparency blah blah blah. <laughs> and I was like cuz you know when you go through a feed and you're just like, "Oh, what's up? All cute." cute. And then black note. <laughs> and then once you see that note app popped up, you're like, "Uh-oh." This is something to look at. Uh oh. No one, the notes app is always, you're like, oh, okay. Well, then you read it and you're like, oh, well, at least he didn't do anything illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to expect anymore. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, when well, you begin with in all transparency. Listen, you're, I mean, basically, you can, you can be out here looking for your Final Fantasy kinks. Yeah. <laughs> I totally can now. I'm, I, I mean, I'm mostly working on me, but if right. that happens in the meantime, I'm on board. I love that. I used I used to always like give myself at least six months between relationships, mm -hmm. just like arbitrarily. You know what I mean? In my head, even though I also have friends who are like, first days, just fuck them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then if it works out, it'll be great. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, before before this one, which I think was a big uh, part of me stopping, was that I would hop serial monogamy, mm. where I would hop from relationship to a relationship mm. and invest my energy in that person as opposed to fixing whatever I need. And so this time I was like, I, I should probably break that cycle. I can't blame everything <laughs> on the other person, you know? So I'm like, I just gave myself a goal of not getting in any relationship for all of 2023. Okay. And uh, just work on myself and, and instill in myself the qualities that I want to find in a partner. And uh, you, how come everybody makes that face I when we said that. it to Nicole Byer? She made the same really? face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because that's nice, you know. Mm-hmm. It's nice because, like, we don't. Most people don't think about giving themselves. Oh, excuse me. No worries, Rude. Disney person. Oh, you know what? It's my mom. Okay, take it. Can I take yeah, it real of quick? Of course. Okay, now we're gonna get her on, Mama. What? 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 Got my I'm in a meeting. Sorry. Do you want to see who's meeting? This is a friend. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, my mom. I've missed my my mom's call a number of times. Oh, we're still in the shooting, okay? Okay. I love you. Bye. Okay. How? I love you, mommy. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Nice. I've trained my mom to say I love you too after I say I love you. Oh, was she? Yeah. Was that an issue before? Yeah, she doesn't. She didn't say stuff like that. Oh no! I had to train her. That's mm-hmm. how I got better. Yeah. <laughs> so that was an issue in your relationship previously. Not an issue. I think it, it was. It seems just like, like an issue. It was not an <laughs> issue. It was more if like if you don't tell me and you love me and you're my mom, I'm gonna say it's an issue. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like as as I like took stock of becoming an adult. And I was like, what do I need? Mm-hmm. What can I control? I was like, I can only control so much of my parents, but I can maybe just con- like train my mom to do this one thing mm-hmm. minimally. Mm-hmm. And she does it now. So I'm just like, I love you, mommy. And she'll be like, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she did it exactly. It's like 90 Day Fiance when Mohammed and Danielle were in a relationship and she would say, I love you. And then he'd be like, I love, I love Lamp. And Are you is- serious? <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not up on the 90 day fiance multiverse. I feel a lot of people, I mean, that was a real deep cut idea, but I feel like two or three people are gonna listen to this and be like, hell yeah, I love that pool he just made. <laughs> and that's all I do it for. I like that. I yeah. like that. Just for the five people. Yeah. Do you want to talk about me more? Or do you want can I switch oh, no. into talking about you? <laughs> <laughs> this is your podcast yeah i mean but i'm open if you, I love you it. came in and you're interested in my life i'll, I'll adjust but i came i mean i was hoping to interview you but you yeah. could interview me no i like i already like what we covered i feel like i just wanted an acknowledgement of certain life changes because mm-hmm. i feel like we just have to bring ourselves into the room <laughs> <laughs> That's how you come in at any place i heard you getting divorced dog <laughs> Nice to meet you. I'm Jenny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, is that rude? I was just like, I need to, I need to read up on the latest with Ron. You know, <laughs> uh, both sons' birthday this week. One's oh, turning wow. one. One's turning twenty. So that's real fun. Uh, working a bunch on on loot and, and yes, getting the. It's right at the point where I'm going to be like, oh, man, we only got a few weeks. But also, I'm like, I'm excited to be done. Yeah. It's a great place to be. Yeah. Um, and then just hopeful to come back. That's where pretty much where I'm at. Yay. Thanks, Jenny. I have to catch up on loot. Please. I mean, I was waiting for you an you inter-office start? romance. No, no, I have started. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was like, is there going to be sexual tension with Joel Kim Booster? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. How could there not be? <laughs> He's joking boost. Yeah. <laughs> he's just raw sexuality. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty sexual. Yeah. Yeah. 
Jenny. Yes. Usually I start the podcast by saying what I like about people and why I enjoy you. Um, mm. And I just think you're very funny, of course. Uh, you're very stylish, which I love in any person. Uh, you, you are a good person and you, you spend your time uh, putting positivity in the world, whether it's in your uh, organ- organizing and raising money for worthy causes, putting on shows for things, or just uh, generally raising an awareness. You're out there being being a good in the world and uh and so that's worthy of praise i believe thank you that's so nice absolutely i'm gonna let that soak in i try to be a positive force in the world Mm -hmm. you know and then try to delight people that's our job right i think so yeah some people don't think so some people reject that i would say so yes there are different opinions about what comedy is Mm -hmm. (laughs) Am I? Can I say nice things about you now? Oh, okay. It's not a prerequisite. Is it? Sure. Is not okay. Um, I've loved how ever since I've known you, you've been the most supportive, even if we haven't known each other really well, with all the stuff that I get into. I feel like we were on shows together, and you were like so positive and helpful, and like affirming, and that's like that means so much to like comedians because we are all just suck holes of insecurity. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I just really appreciate like how much you like are out here trying to like spread positivity and support. Well, I like comedy and I like good comedy. And so I, I, decided long ago that's what i was about was spreading awareness and joy about the things that i love and so yeah. when i see something i enjoy i'm a big even you and it used to be ego based as well where i'd be like oh i hope when they do out they'll do it for me you know? right and right you find that like 80 percent. that's not the case but yeah. i was like i don't want to let that change who, how I act. Like, yes. I want to put a spotlight on comedy. I feel like it needs that sometimes. some pe- I feel like stand-up is one of the most, um, I guess, underlooked and, like, kind of disrespected art forms. And the fact that it is the way... Like, I, you never hear someone or see someone playing a guitar and somebody going, ah, I could do that. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> if I give me two weeks, I could be in a couple better. beers. Yeah. Yeah. And you, but you get that all the time with comedy or even to the point now, um, you know, and it's not other people's fault. There's too many uh, sexual assaults and things of that nature where then people go, comedy sucks. Everybody's fucking pirate and horrible person. And I want to be like, comedy is beautiful. You not know Blair Saki? Do you not know fucking James A. Caster? Do you mm. not know like there's all these beautiful, sweet, yeah. weird minds? And so I always like putting the spotlight on that. And I love that you always, um, not always, but your comedy tends to have a tinge of like self help and like yeah. positivity to it, and yeah. a, a reason, a reason for existing. And so I always like am supportive of that. Oh, I like it. Tell me about your self-help show that you do. What's the, how does that work? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, fun story, March 19th, 2020, Mm -hmm. I had scheduled a show that was previously called everything's fine with Jenny Yang colon, a competitive self-care comedy show. And then, you know, 2020 happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got depressed. Everyone did. So many things happened. It's so weird. I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, I, just yesterday was like, wow, that it's such a mind warp in time suck where I can't eat. And I go like, oh, at the beginning of it, I was working on a Quibi show. And I was like... <laughs> R.I.P. Quibi. Yeah. Quibi's like, you know what's going to be big in 2020? People being on the go and yeah. watching mobile video. Yeah, they don't got time. They're busy. They packed in buses, planes, trains, theaters. They got... hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like 20... We, we should take a moment to acknowledge it because I just scheduled my a dental appointment. And they're like, oh, look at that. You haven't been here in like two years. And then I just realized I didn't know this, that like I didn't pay my registration for my like little sticker for my car. Two years. 
And then in my head, I was like, I got to forgive myself because a lot of shit happened in the last two and a half years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, like you, that- got, you can let go of registration when you're in a pandemic. <laughs> we lost time. We lost time. I yeah. moved. My dad passed away. I got engaged. There was all these things that happened. Yeah. I mean, I really was thinking there was like, not many people get to live through a whole ass worldwide pandemic and like we don't get you a t-shirt or nothing that says <sighs> I, I'm, I I was there for nope. the pandemic. We get nothing. Overall, people just try to sweep it under the rug. <laughs> it, uh, I mean, I'm watching The Last of Us. No, we're still I'm out like, here. Yes. Deal? Watching TV shows yeah. about pandemics. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's a weird disconnect. So for me, um, I I feel like I lost time in the last couple years. We don't know what happened. Like, it's all a blur. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, there's just, I just excuse, I, I try to be more forgiving of people now after the pandemic. It's what I do about my whole marriage. I'm like, who was to know? <laughs> Did it will even you forgive really me? happen? Will, will, will you forgive me that I brought it up first thing? Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're a kind and gracious and compassionate man. So, uh, so yes, the show. so there's a show. Um, I just had this idea. I, you know, a, a lot of what I did when I first started comedy, I talked a lot about my identity and did a lot of like public speaking about it or speaking up about issues. And I totally like love that people found that to be helpful and useful. And then I just got kind of burnt out on it. Mm-hmm. Like when the Atlanta spa shootings happen, when all these like aunties and mamas who are like working in the massage and, you know, scrubbing parlors, right. And got shot up, like happened. I was so distraught. People were like, what do you think? I like tweeted something that went viral. And then there was like news people were like, can you tell us more about how it feels? And I was like, Oh no, Mm -hmm. I can't anymore. I can't. So in my head, I was like, well, what are some of the areas outside of maybe my identity? Even like being a woman, honestly, because it's like, it was just responding to so much like, fuck shit can I curse Mm -hmm. fuck shit in the world you know that I was like I just want to talk about wellness I want to talk about self-care and wellness make fun of it 70 percent 30 percent talk about it for real Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's where this is the new show it's called self-help me that's the new name of it Uh, we did it in April it was sold out at Dynasty Typewriter it's still a competitive self-care comedy show so there's a tinge of satire you know, um, I open it up. I tell some jokes about the topic of the day. The first topic was burnout and work-life balance. Mm-hmm. And then we play games where I give arbitrary points to our panelists for playing little quizzes about the topic. You know, so it might be headlines. It might be esoteric improv- improvisation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just for funsies. And But I always want to make sure we have a subject matter expert. So for burnout, I had uh, Dr. Jazz, who is an incredible, like, licensed psychotherapist, PhD. Um, and it was great because we would be like, jokey, jokey, jokey. And I'd be like, Dr. Jazz, you know, um, what can you offer as a therapist for us if we are burnt out, uh, free universal healthcare, maybe a higher living wage, maybe uh childcare for people who need it, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. it, whatever that takes away the stress. And she'll be like, no, but this is what you can do. And then she offers things. And I swear, like, there was a moment in the audience where she was dropping knowledge and we we're like, <gasps> like, I had so many people afterwards go, Jenny, your show made me rethink my life. Oh, that's so beautiful. Like, in a good way and in a half joking way, yeah, right? Where no. they're like, I think I'm burnt out and I think I need to take some steps to fix that. Yeah, but it's the spoonful of sugar, Mary Poppins. (laughs) You're making the medicine go down. I like to think so. Totally. Yeah. And so I'm really proud of the show. It it was in my head for three years from 2020 until 2023. Finally put it up on its legs. Every month we're going to write a new show about a new topic. So the next show is going to be about um, breakups, Mm. (laughs) breakups, friend, love, breaking up with your therapist, whatever is hard for when it comes to ending relationships. Um, yeah, we haven't written it yet, but it's going to be great. I can't wait. It sounds like a good time. And the thing that you said in the lead up to talking about it, when you talked about the spa shootings, is something that I had been thinking about a lot recently. And it's like that balance and that thing that you have to have between wanting to share something that bothers you and being able to express your anger and your fear and your pain. And then when it 
kind of flips to people tr- using your pain for entertainment. And, yeah. 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 And I think that's, um, that's a line that I have to really be cognizant of. And I have been when it comes to like talking about my son, my oldest son and talking yeah. about um, autism and things like that, because right. I enjoy talking about it and it makes me feel better to talk about it. And then there's times where like, uh, I got a call from like America's Got Talent people years years ago before I was like doing too well. And they were like, we, we love for you to audition and, uh, and do some jokes about your son. And I was just like, oh. Specifically about your son. Yeah. That feels, so that feels kind of gross sometimes, yeah. right? It feels exploitative yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And you said no. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't want to, because that's like, well, I write jokes about him when I, when he did something or when, right. moved, but not, for you, not for yeah. your entertainment. Yeah. For my life. Totally. And I think that's like the difference between being able to like just express something in the moment that's important to you and then having this thing where you like, where they want to make you represent a whole people or yes. a whole segment segment of um of the world and like that I'm just me and I can only, especially when it came to autism and I imagine it's the same uh, with anything that you're dealing with, with yeah. being Asian, being a woman, where it's like, I can really only tell you about my story. I 100. can't represent everybody else. Yeah. And I don't necessarily want to swim in the pain of it all the time for you. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. You know, mm-hmm. it'll come up naturally in my life, you know? And I think with the pandemic, especially, I just found myself, I, I don't know about you, but I age like 10 years. You know, my energy level is just not the same anymore. It was just like, you know, I used to create more content online and I just was like, I can't, I, I, do I have the energy for this? Do I have the energy for the comments? Do I have the, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think right now I just, I like the direction of like talking about self-care, talking about wellness, because it's a part of my process. Hopefully it helps others. You know what I mean? put some stuff, if I put out a video, it's because I really want to. (laughs) And it's like, you know, me being like, this is how I'm going to honor her queen, Michelle Yeoh on Oscars night. You know, it's like fun stuff like that for now. Mm -hmm. I still think about and care about the serious stuff, but yeah. No, I think it's fun to move when you're truly inspired to do things and not because you're like, oh, if I don't post, people will forget about me. Totally. uh, My followers will go down. Like, it's just... (laughs) I think we forget that like creating in itself is the um that's the whole meal. That's the whole joy. Yeah. It's like the rest of it is all icing. So it's like if someone sees it, yeah, some people enjoy it, it's fine and it feels like it's gotten flipped to where it's like if you feel like you don't go viral on I something, know. you're like, oh, did I even make something? Do I matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I that's why doing this live show, uh, self help me has been so fun because it's like we're just writing a new creative show, making fun of a topic we want to make fun of, you know? And so it'll be great. Like for the breakup show, I'm pretty sure, not that I'm a Swifty. I'll talk about some celebrity breakups, Mm -hmm. you know, Ron Funch is not included. Oh, I'm a celebrity. If I'm a celebrity, do it. (laughs) I'm okay with that. There were a couple of blogs that wrote about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, blogs are writing about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm a niche celebrity at best, but I did get a little joy when I found out someone said, Jenny, when you went on the red carpet, it was for loot. I mm-hmm. actually, was it for loot? Yeah. Cause there was like money and stuff. Um, your, your outfit got posted on go fug yourself. Is that good or bad? I guess it's like a blog that likes to cover oh, wait, I think fashion. Because you, I think you I might have tagged you. you tagged me because we both got tagged because they talked about our sneakers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know. But it, it was positive. I it was think. positive. Yeah. It was positive. We both said that we looked good and casual. Listen, you know, we took a little risk with a little bold choice, mm-hmm. but go fuck yourself liked it. Yeah. I don't even know what these <laughs> things are. <laughs> it was someone who tagged me and they're like guess what you made it go fuck yourself covered you i was like great that really sounds mean the more you say it i know go fuck yourself <laughs> Should I just, i'll just keep doing it until it hurts <laughs> what got you in the self-help uh, in general jenny uh ron you know when you grow up not getting equipped with the things you need to thrive in the world from your parents. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like you got to like seek out those resources yourself. <laughs> so that's why um, I've been obsessed forever with like self-help books and therapy and self-care because, you know, I'm the youngest of three kids. My brothers are 10 and nine years older than me. I, we came to America from Taiwan when I was five. My parent, I grew up not speaking English at home. Their English was not that great. So basically at age five, I was the fastest to learn English. Okay. She became the family translator, mm -hmm. right? Lots of responsibility, get straight A's. That's why we came to America. Mm -hmm. You know, parents are always stressed out. My mom was a garment worker. My brothers didn't do great in school. So that was like added pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, we, we, we do what we can with the tools we're given. And what I was given was a lot of not knowing how to process my emotions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like knowing how you feel at any moment is a very new experience for me. Mm -hmm. Like that required some work. Like that required some practice, you know, some therapy, lots of self-help books and journaling. Um, I used to write poetry a lot before I did comedy, you know. I was a little, I wrote some poetry. Did you? Yeah, yeah, a little. Had a little tender poetic heart that was either like silly, silly poems mm -hmm. or really emotional ones that like made people cry. And it was like my way of like, you know, processing things in college. And then so I would perform it in college. And then when I moved to LA to work uh, because I wanted to be close to my family, um, I was like, ah, yeah, performing poetry in college, that's a college thing. But then I kind of stumbled into this really great community of Asian American artists who there was a regular open mic. I became an associate artist there. Um, and I was able to, for most of my twenties, like just do, do poetry around mm -hmm. town in LA. That's actually what I was known for, even though I was like working at in politics or like nonprofit. So yeah, it was a lot of just like, I'm just like trying to like teach myself tools. I didn't, it was only my like nuclear family. I didn't have any like mentor or like cousin or uncle or aunt in America that could be like, well, this is how the world works, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a lot of me figuring things out. So I feel like I follow some of these like um, Instagram therapists who are like intersectional or like women of color or immigrant and I, I, I swear to God, you read some of the information that they share and it's like, oh my God, this is very true about being an immigrant kid. Like, you know, the hyper independence that you kind of learn because you had to be independent. Mm -hmm. So that becomes your personality. And then you're like terrible at asking people for help. Like all of that, it all kind of, you know, comes in a package. And so oh, I remember reading one of those things one day being like, yeah, oh yeah. I, I, I feel found out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like it is a thing that you hear about a lot about when it comes to um, immigrants and also just there's tends to be like two types of childhoods. There's yeah. so many types, but I'm going to yes. break it down into okay. like whether either you have this ability to remain a child. You believe in Santa Claus. You yes. I mean? You've had this for a long time and your parents are there for you in this way that allows you to remain a kid for as long as possible. And there yeah. are lots of benefits to that, I believe. And that's how I'm trying to raise my, my children. Yeah. Um, but then there's the other side that whether you are the leader because you're the one who can communicate the best with other people or in my case, it was like, you know, a lot of single parent households are the same where it's like the mom goes to work and then the oldest kid becomes the de facto adult at home. Yeah. And it puts a lot of pressure on you and it forces you to grow up at an early age and miss parts of uh, what would be considered the typical childhood. Yeah. Uh, but they're also, I mean, there's positive and negative to both of it. But then as I find what, what in general, then later when you're a full adult, we, you both start dressing like children and relive <laughs> your child. And then become a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, yeah, screw this. I could color my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I could wear bright shoes on a red carpet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's why I went into this, you know, so that I could like, Art isn't supposed to be your therapy, I don't believe, but it can always help mm -hmm. if you are able to channel certain things in it. 
So I, I totally, that's why I got into this. Cause I used to work in politics, like being an organizer, you know, like leading meetings and persuading people about things and campaigns. And I was just like, oh, there's a part of me that knows that it, YOLO, I got to just try to attend to my creative side. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah. And I'm really, I'm a way happier person. I was about to punch my coworkers in the face. That's fun. We had um, <laughs> Tara Schuster. Yes, I know Tara. Last week. And she talked a lot about how when she was trying to work through her, her own emotions and, and, and the pandemic in particular, that it, f that she ran into politics and stuff as a way to run away from her own issues. Yes. Did you see that often in oh, yeah. that world? I imagine. Yeah. Oh my From God. how yelly you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> I know po political people are yelly in a different way than mm -hmm. um, comedian people. But, um, you know, one of, one of the, uh, the most kind of insightful conversations I had was in college. I was built to just work in politics. Like I got like a full fellowship to go to grad school in public policy. Mm -hmm. Like it, I got this uh, thing called the public policy and international affairs fellowship. We did uh, a summer Institute in um, university of Washington, um, UW. Uh, and it was just like a bunch of students of color between sophomore and junior, or no junior and senior year. And we were taught all these things. And it was also part of it as like learning as a cohort, like, oh, like, how are you motivated to like change the world, blah, blah, blah. And I had this late night conversation and I remember having this insight being like, oh, a lot of us are here because there is something about our own lives that we couldn't really fix. Mm. And so we were like, if I can't fix my life, maybe I can fix the lives of others. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And maybe that'll look like social work where it's one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe it'll look like policy and politics where you can change systems and laws, you know? So that's that's that was a huge insight. It was like, oh, fuck, dude. I need to pay attention to that because that doesn't seem like a sustainable path to happiness. No, but where is the balance? Like, because you want to be a positive in your community and you yeah. want to be able to affect some change. And I feel like sometimes I lie on the complete opposite end of the spectrum of that, where I listen to my, one of my favorite rappers, Larry June, who says, you can't change the world, but you can get that bag. And yeah. I'm like, thank you, Larry. I agree with that. But yeah. also I would like to still make some type things positive, but I think with in general, so many people have apathy, right? Because you look at the, you talked about the shooting and stuff and you look at the base level of things and you go like, well, we all kind of know, just get rid of these guns. <laughs> yeah. But it becomes this whole thing and rigmarole and, and, and feels, you're like, oh, yeah. well, clearly you just don't represent us. Like yeah. you're just going to like, oh, this is fine, you yeah. know? And so then you go, like, well, what can I do? I'm Ugh. saying I don't want these guns. Exactly. And, but the people who are in charge of, they're like, well, there's nothing we can do. I know. So it makes it, it, it's, it's easy to fall into a place of like, well, if I can't control that, you know what I mean? If there's no hope there, I guess I'll just do what I can and get this bread. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's where I live. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. And 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 that's 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 how the system gets us, Ron. Hey, yeah, no, I concur. Help me get out of this, Jenny. <laughs> I I struggle with it too, you know. I think the more I'm able to uh, make a living off of entertainment and comedy, the more a hundred percent it feels like, oh. No, I, I'm just rewarded to be complacent. It's the the world and the culture rewards me when I don't say shit, mm -hmm. you know? And I just kind of enjoy my online shopping. And, uh, you know, I bought an outdoor pizza oven. Love that. What? Made that, made that my whole identity recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. yeah, like I also want pleasure and mm -hmm. I think... Um, I'm not going to let you skip ahead. What was your particular best pizza type that you made? What? I mean, listen, I am a purist right now. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm all about that Neapolitan pizza. Yes, all right. The, yeah. Na the Naples peoples figured it out. I love a high hydration dough. Okay. With a little, for a little soft chew. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, with a thin something crust. that bites back a little bit. You know, bit. just a little bit, not too tough. Mm -hmm. Cause it's all about that high hydration. Hydration. Um, yeah. So I I learned how to make that dough. I was inspired because I went to Italy once 
hashtag goes diddly once, gets a pizza Love oven. Parts. Um, went to Rome and mm-hmm. Florence. I, love um, Florence. I took my mom. Yeah, I took my mom to Europe for the first time. Mm-hmm. I'd been to Paris and London. I took her there, but I hadn't been to Italy. None mm-hmm. of us had. So we're like, yo, let's go to Italy. We ate. First night, we ate at this place called Piccolo Buco, this great pizzeria that was recommended. It was in the middle of Rome, kind of touristy next to the Trevi Fountain, but it was still dope. Went in there. They were so fast. It was the best pizza I've ever had. Mm -hmm. We had to have it a second time. You know, when you travel, you don't really go eat at places twice. Mm -hmm. But for that, I did. And on the last night, because we flew into Rome, flew out of Rome, man, that last night, we're like, we're going to get this. Let's just see if they'll still come through. We ate it. Still good. Just a margarita pizza. Just a basic. That's how you test how good a pizza is. Mm -hmm. It's just cheese, basil, a little sauce. That night, it was around late November. There was a Black Friday sale. I cruised around and I was like, let me get this uni pizza oven. I know. I love this story. I mean, I, I, I recently did an Italian class here in L.A., after my trip there, because I'm this obsessed. I love Italy. It's fun. I love Florence is one of my top three favorite places to visit. Yeah. I love the there's like uh, getting the little sandwiches there. They're so <gasps> good. You get a five dollar sandwich <sighs> that will change your life. I Have you had so a lampredodo? I don't know what that is. It's like it's like lamb intestines that mm-hmm. they stew in the savory kind of jus gravy. Mm-hmm. They slap it in between. I can tell you if they described it to me, I would have said no. Right, but you probably had it if, Maybe. You, if you've had one of them sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, those are one of those street sandwiches. It's like it's like the Florence street sandwich. Oh, I love that. It doesn't taste like intestines. Okay, now I'll get back to social justice. <laughs> How do I? <laughs> are you afraid of the intestine talk? Is that no? What the... Anyways, um, no. I believe I, I, I'm not saying it's bad to have pleasure, right? It's that it's not it's it's bad to like feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. I I but I would like that for everyone. Yes, you know. I, I was fortunate enough to move into a new house and buy a house during the pandemic hell yeah. that's on a hill. Nice. Me Love too. a hill. That's what yeah, I'm saying. We did it. High five. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep paying for it. Yeah, but, me too. <laughs> you know. And a secondary household. <laughs> I mean, well, listen, you're out here spreading your seed. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, I feel good about it. I'm like, damn, I can take care of two households. Look at me. Killing it. And That's the dream. Being like, why didn't you stay married? Be like, okay, if you could afford to take care of two households, you wouldn't make the choice. <laughs> I like that spin. I like that spin. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a blessing mm-hmm. that you're able to do that, you know? Um, so, yeah, I would love for everyone to be able to have fresh air and health care and, you know, fucking high hydration dough. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I agree too. Yeah. That, but, but that's so, so that's the thing. It's like balancing, okay, your energy to create your energy to take care of the people that are nearest to you. Um, and then the energy to step up when like some shit's going down in the world and you're like, this is not right. You know, yeah. that's, I'm still figuring that out. Well, thank you. Cause that makes me feel better. Yeah. Than, uh, no, no, no. Don't got it. No. Cause people, people see me as this like big time activist sometimes. And I'm just like, bro, an activist is someone who just acts sometimes. That's all you got to do. And other times you could be napping. You got, you know, and you know what I love is the movement uh, amongst, this is a queer, a very queer, a, a very woman of color, a very, a very black femme driven um, movement around activism and social justice um, where they talk about pleasure activism or um, the nap ministry is a great account that I follow. Wow, that sounds like a band that I would create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all it's all these amazing black femmes. Oh, why are we not turning this off? Why are we not turning this off, guys? Very unprofessional. I know. I thought he turned it off, guys. Get over there. Sorry. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Nap ministry. Oh yeah. So one of my favorite one of my favorite um, Instagram accounts is Nat Ministry, and it's just these amazing like black femme leaders who are just like putting the word out and being like, listen, maybe it's cool for you to nap, especially if you're a black woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you're someone 
who just Whoa, gets... Wait, I could be an activist about napping? Yes. I'm on board with that <laughs> for sure. I should be a leader of that. You got to nap. Yeah. Like if you're, you know, especially if someone who feels like the world has got you down, mm-hmm. sometimes the best thing is self-preservation. Take a nap. Take also, a nap. People think you less productive, but what's more productive than having two days in one? <laughs> I think the idea is also to sort of drop out of the the rat race a little yeah. bit. To drop out of the mentality of like the hustle culture and all that. Because that's capitalism. Just cr- crack down on us, Ron. Yeah, it takes us and turns us into human little batteries. It's one of the main things I don't like about um, the creator trend right now of just because I watch a lot of YouTube videos and shorts recently. And I'm just like, oh. You're just trying to sell me fruit roll-ups. I you're know. just trying to sell me uh, Takis. It's like yeah. you're, you're all fucking, uh, you know, they all, they're all paying you a very small amount. And so you make all your content about these things and crumble cookies. And, this, and it's like, make me a fucking dumb sketch about no yeah. product. Yeah. And that's what I'd like. You know? Yeah. Because I feel like we're, we're turning it, everyone... Eventually, everyone's doing OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like eventually we're all just, you know, freelance individuals that aren't connected to each other. We're just trying to like hustle our way through, sell things. Yeah. I feel like that's the neg- that's the negative outcome of all of this. That's, yeah, but potentially, truly. But there's a be- real beauty in um, being able to market. And monetize your personality, a hundred percent joy and your no, life. No, don't get me wrong. I feel like it's like a balance, you yeah. know. Because on the one hand, I feel great that like I don't need Hollywood gatekeepers anymore necessarily. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to just use my iPhone and make some shit, you mm-hmm. know, and like find an audience, but I also get worried about how much everyone is a content creator now, and where how are they going to make money? You yeah. know, how are they going to take care of themselves? And they burn themselves out. And so, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, unionize. <laughs> that's, I, that's, the, that's the final straw. <laughs> yeah. I think, and my favorite artists and the people who I kind of emulate my career after balance between the two, like, yeah, it's taking advantage of opportunities that like, if I get a, a, a like something like loot or it's like, yes, of course, I will. Um, I'm blessed and happy to be a part of it. But then I also use that so then I don't have to be so worried about yes. touring. And then I can really just joke about whatever I want to joke about. I, don't, I can give more of a message. I don't have to be. Um, I feel like a lot of my comedy was similar to how I acted as a child when my mom and, you know, growing up in an abusive household where yeah. I there's people, oh, well, you know, let's make everything nice yes. and everything's okay. And I still what feel like- What do people like, want? What do people yeah. want? And my comedy was like that, even to like, where I'd get on stage and I'd always be like, hi, hey. Yeah. Hi. And now I'm just more like, hey, what's up? How are yeah. we doing? And I'm, right. I'm really getting into this more confidence of me and it is because I am, have the mix between where I'm like, well, I'm getting money from here. Yep. But if I if all else sucked, I also have the ability to just really push my podcast, really push my stand up. And so I think if anything, it's like a return to vaudeville style of like, it's best to be involved in as many things as you can that you're truly passionate about and yeah. have a community of people that you're working with as well. I would agree with that. Yeah. I feel lucky I get to do multiple things. For sure, because you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket, you know. Yeah, that was a real pandemic lesson for me, though. Oh was, yeah, um, just because I get so. ego based, and I'm like, oh man, I think I'm really good at stand up. I think I'm a good writer. I'm a good performer. Yeah, and I and I feel like a lot of times. I mean, I think I just came from some people where I'd be like, they, they knew me from different voice actings or things like that. But they were like, oh, you do stand up, and I'm like, I'm fucking great at stand up. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm one of the best active stand ups. <laughs> And so then I'd be like, I should just focus on stand up. Yeah. And then yeah. once I focus fully on stand up, they'll the, see. Yeah. How goddamn he's good. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit, and I'm like, oh, God, thank God I do voiceovers. 100%. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I mean, I've, I've felt that conflict too because um, I a lot of my initial career was uh, producing my own stand up comedy shows and touring and college shows because around 2013, that's when Buzzfeed was huge. And I was able to do a bunch of freelance for them. And because of that, 
bunch of college kids were like, hey, that Asian girl from BuzzFeed, let's get her to come. Oh, she does stand up. Great. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. I was very fortunate to like start stand up and then fairly quickly make a living because I was able to like control my own destiny. And in my head too, I was like, I'm not going to wait for Hollywood to green light me on anything. I don't know how this works, you know? So, but doing that though, there was a cost because it was so much energy to just producing mm -hmm. and I'm good at it, but it drains me. Mm -hmm. And then it takes away from my creativity. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, like as much as I've been doing stand up for maybe 10 years, I feel like it's not like 10 whole years because some of that was taken with taken away with uh, the producing energy or whatnot. So I was like, man, my shit is exhausting. I need to not travel so much. I want to be able to keep a plan alive. How can I maybe get a writer's job or something? And luckily I was able to like submit a packet and I got a late night talk show that got me into the WGA. You know what I'm saying? That was like 2018. And so that was like a great change for, for my career so that I could like make some money and not have to like tour so much, you know, cause I was never one of those like road dogs who are just like, yeah, I'm going to go to the comedy condo and, you know, lay down next to some crusty ass jizz. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Whatever. That's what we would say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's me uh, assuming that's exactly how those road comics talk yeah. uh, <laughs> about the comedy condos. No, but like I, I knew that's not going to that's not going to be the lifestyle I wanted, you know, so but I still love performing. So, yeah, I totally had that thought where I was just like, oh, people don't I don't want people to forget that I perform. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I guess I should be doing some stuff. But then I was like. Ah, but I'm so burnt out. I'm so depressed. Why are, Why is everything going against me? Like, yeah. and it just, I was blocked for like a better part of like 2019 to 2020, I would say. And, and, you know, when the pandemic happened, there was certain comedians who were still like, I don't give a fuck. Let's do a rooftop show. Mm -hmm. We're going to do open air nonstop. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know? And I was like, uh, uh, I cannot, I cannot. My heart is too tender for this. Yeah. And a lot of people, have, you know, that's if that's all you have and you really want to hold on yes. to. And for a lot of comedians, that is how uh, we, we think and we act and we put a lot into the last set and being able to do as many sets as possible. And I think it really put a spotlight on having great work-life balance, which is important for yes. anybody, right? Like yes. you have to be able to be happy to, with yourself and be happy to be at home and not- Have a personal life? Yeah. Like, do you remember all the weird content we got from celebrities because they were not used to just being mm -hmm. home? And you're like, what is happening? Mm -hmm. Some of it was funny and so, brilliant, yeah. but some of it Most was like- of it, nah. Well, you're like, what? And my favorite was just being like, okay, if you take a makeup artist from most of these late night hoes, ghoulish. <laughs> Happy birthday, Conan. Um, <laughs> we love you, Conan O'Brien. <laughs> I actually, I actually worked with his makeup artist, mm -hmm. which is hilarious. I was like, very good job. Very natural. <laughs> to her shout out to mara <laughs> i was like very natural because i've seen him without makeup and wow <laughs> what a difference but with makeup on still very natural yeah right? you know you what i mean know, but then strong difference <laughs> <laughs> he's a very white man he very pale very, very white pale. man very white, white uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> i think he would accept that yeah observation we love you papa conan <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Just, what are your goals right now, Jenny? How oh are you gosh. focusing on your life, physical, mental, uh, health, spiritual, career, whatever you want to share, whatever you're open to sharing? Like my uh, car registration. God, boom. Did you get it done? Sent that in. Still okay. waiting for the sticker. Yeah. Right. Hoping no 5-0 is around when I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> Avoiding the cops <laughs> right yeah. now. Yeah, you really be pushing. You'd be like, come on, y'all, pandemic. They'd be like, come on, it's too late. <laughs> you you should have registered by that. No, I like, so the thing is, I'm actually really good with paperwork in general. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not a person who's afraid of it, but there is still a part of me that neglects that part of myself in terms of self care, mm -hmm. like making the appointments for the dentist. You know what I mean? Like, go into like, like my taxes. Mm -hmm. I didn't find all taxes. No, man. Did y'all find You're in taxes? the middle. Um, me and Jenny, fully, full disclosure, 
That was where I put all my money when I first got any money was in setting up an infrastructure that allows me Can to I be the to least you? professional person. Can I talk to you about that? Because yeah. that was one of the, that's something that as much as I'm a good producer, all these things, the, the setting up a business infrastructure for my life mm-hmm. with my little S corp, with my WME agents, mm-hmm. with my, you know what I mean? With mm-hmm. my Venmoing people. Cause they're, you know, doing my shows. Mm-hmm. It stresses me out. No, very stressful. You can, you can, um, you know, put that on somebody else. I barely got a loan for my fucking house because of my paperwork. Same. My paperwork was a mess. When I got my first house, I was terrified because they were like, "You need to go get a better credit. You should probably go get." They were like, "You don't have." Horrible credit, but you have like no credit. <laughs> you got like clearly you've been just running all. You need cash. a credit card. We need to get you a begin a starter credit yeah, card. <laughs> yeah, so I went and got applied for Macy's card and they denied. Go to me. the Gap. Yeah, I know. You and just I was <laughs> like, if they're not gonna give me a credit card, they're not gonna give me a house. But they did, so I was happy about that. But yo, it was uh, by the skin of my chinny chin chin. Yeah. Woo! So that's actually an area of my life that I would love some some guidance on. Well, I would just say, because what happened for me was like, I started working on a couple of shows and doing better financially. Yeah. But then uh, my electricity would still get cut off because <gasps> I would forget to pay the bill. And so um, I was lucky in that. I just, just went to her wedding last week. My first assistant, she worked with me on a my show called Crash and Bernstein and we became friends. And then she heard me talking about this type of stuff and something she was like you need an assistant yeah and i was like well i don't really know if i can afford assistant and she was like we'll figure it out yeah She's like we'll go as, as we go but you need an assistant is she, she still being an assistant these days she is for ted sarandos is that how you pronounce his name oh, i don't know she don't need me yeah she's a, she is now the head of netflix's assistant so she's great at her job tiny yes. randy shout out to tiny randy tiny uh, randy Randy is her name. That's what I call her because she's five foot nothing. Her name is Randy what? Rand, Rand, well, now it's Randy Suazo because she just got married. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I did see Ted Sarandos in real life one mm-hmm. time because I, I was on a Netflix show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Plug coming out in September. I <laughs> <laughs> um, But my own point is like getting this, either get an assistant that, that can work part time for you that can, um, Help you organize your bills, organize those type of things, make those Venmo payments for you. Um, but then orig- eventually I had to get a business manager who pays my bills and does my taxes for me. And that's actually really fun now because sometimes I'll be on lately been on Bumble or whatever. And they're like, oh, I'm working on my taxes. You uh, you know, that sucks. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to go back to me mentioning I saw Ted Sarandos because I, ha- I had a little story about it. I didn't want to just drop it like it was some okay, like, I weird, like, I, I thought weird. Your name just drop. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was literally. It was like he glowed. Mm. This is when when someone is such a rich, privileged white man. Mm-hmm. It's like he floated. Is all I'm going to say. This is that next level wealth, yeah. Ron. When you start meeting these people who run these companies, mm-hmm. you're like. Oh, oh yeah, it's real wild. You're skin- real money. When you see real money. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what I've learned. He to- was casual. Yeah. But you know, it was that like succession level yeah. of like what how much did money that t shirt cost? Yeah. You know, your skin is glowing. Why are you glowing, man? That's what I've been uh, older uh, white man. How sw- are you glowing? I used to be just like, I'm doing great. And I'm uh, and I and I'm very grateful for how <laughs> I do. But now I tell myself, man. You make NBA fucking bench player money. You got to at least get the starter money. You a fucking, are you a bench player? Or are you a starter, motherfucker? Is that, the, is that your running internal script mm-hmm. for yourself? You're mm-hmm. like, you got to work harder. Yeah. I want <laughs> starter money, dog. Got to get some starter money. Fucking put me in, in the fucking five, in the first five. I'm not, I'm not vet, vet minimum. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to get Ted Sarandos money at all. No, not at I all. mean I tell you, Michael, I want to make about fifteen to eighteen million dollars. Okay, um, that's what I feel is a solid amount that will take yeah. care of family for multiple generations. Yeah, but not allow me to get to a point where I'm super crazy. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Right. I feel like there's like a little threshold where you cross of like richness where you lose touch with reality. Mm-hmm. Right. Truly. Yeah. So I think my goal is to definitely get my business stuff together. Um, 
just create more, write more. I'm, I'm going to probably try to come up with some pitches for like either a TV show or a movie that I can be in. Mm -hmm. like, that could be for me. Cause I've only been selling shows or working on shows for other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that would be wow, characters so that it's not I for never, me. I've never done that. Oh. I've always pitched just for me. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, I know. Guess who's the star? It's because me. <laughs> I got into I got into the WGA writing for other people, right? Mm -hmm. And so that just was like, okay, this is a thing. And then I'm like, mm, I want to pay attention to my stuff too. You yeah, know? but I mean, I only meant that I am. Um, I wish I had that skill set. There's a thing that I learned from working on. I worked on two shows. I worked on the Eric Andre show and I worked on the Kroll show. Yeah. Both great shows. Good, yeah. good pedigree. Uh, but I learned quickly that I write best for my voice. Yeah. I don't write. I have a extremely difficult time changing my voice to hear somebody else's rhythm. Right. And I feel like I looked at it as a detriment, but I was like, no, that's a positive. My, yes. It means my voice is very strong. Yes. And I so would agree I with that. should just lean into that yeah. and just say, okay, I don't work well with that. I don't do that well. I do other things well. Knowing is half the battle. Mm hmm. G.I. Joe. <laughs> um, no one needs to know how old I am, but I do know that reference. I didn't even know that was old. I don't even, I pay no attention to time. I was going. <laughs> time space yeah I would. We're, we're out here you know I, I feel like i'm out here healing my inner child and mm -hmm. it's, it's more my, my career now is to display my inner child yeah i love that you know i can see it the i'm in a romper helps. yeah the, yeah let's play yeah <laughs> and i feel like so many people don't um understand the power of that and they look at it sometimes as being childish right but right. i feel like being open hearted and close to your pure self and childlike as possible is as strong as you can be. And that's what I love being. It's just, I like, would agree. I'm, I, could, I could put on a suit and be a strong man and yell at you if you'd like, yeah. or I could just wear a bunch of tie dye and fun stuff and just hang out and play video games and still pay my bills. What's the, why would you choose otherwise? Yeah. You know, I think there's a kind of, um, Peace and comfort that I have uh, gained as I've gotten older, the more I have know who I am, mm. right? Like if you know that that's how you thrive, you know that that's what you're good at, whatever, it's easy to make decisions. Like generally, it's very easy for me to make decisions, business mm -hmm. or otherwise, mm. because I just, I know my gut and I'm just like, oh that person's trash, <laughs> not going to work with them. Or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like this deal sounds shady, don't need it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather sleep, you know? hundred <laughs> percent. Do you want to waste your time in a not great situation? Or would you rather take a nap? Would you rather play video game? You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I, and that's, I feel like I'm lucky to get to this point and it's, it's an ever changing thing. If a big bill pops up, it'll change. And I'll be <laughs> like, whatever you want. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't want to be there, but if you, the pay is high enough, I'm coming through. Yeah. Uh, but now it's been a good time where I'm like, Oh, I like that person. And I will um, enjoy working with them. So yeah. sure. Let's go do it. Right. Uh, but if it doesn't meet that, you, there's not, um, It'd have to be probably at least six figures for me to do it otherwise. <laughs> but got to be at least six figures for me to get out of bed. No, not like no, that. No, no, but okay. to do to do some horrible thing yes. I don't want to do. A hundred percent. I could say I wouldn't, but I. But if they were like 100 grand, a hundred grand, probably I'd do it. There's a. I mean, I'm not going to say that that was the situation for the thing that we did at the beginning of the pandemic. But do you remember that we did this like weird online thing for Amazon? Yeah, the game thing. That was so fun. It was fun, but like, it's like. Oh, but it was easy. I mean, we'll just say it out loud. When they were like, we'll give you 50 grand to fucking <laughs> play video games for a fucking couple hours with a bunch of uh, weird, mean Twitch people. <laughs> but they asked us to write jokes. Yeah. Oh. I did. I didn't write any jokes. I know. I wrote jokes. <laughs> I just showed up. And no, talked. most most everyone you could tell just showed up because we were just riffing off of this weird live stream. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally prepped. I totally prepped because I was like, mm, "Got to be a good student." I it's was the pandemic. Like, I'm getting paid for this. 
I was legitimately like, they're clearly overpaying every single one yeah. of us. And so they'll never, once they see the impact on their bottom line, they'll never do this again. So I would, didn't feel the need. To- I, no, you're right. You're right. Amazon, Bezos, he probably treats money like it's play money. It's just monopoly yeah. money. I know. Oh, but that's one. Uh, I love it when those things come up. Right? A little thing that just gives you a little boost. You're like, you ooh, I could boost. just cruise for a little bit. Yeah. Do you what I want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that more of that. Let's 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 call forth more of that. Please, abundance, abundance, abundance. into our life. I'm already in touch with the abundance. <laughs> 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 I love a mantra. I remember some of these mantras. I, I used to be so into the free self help stuff on PBS. You mm-hmm. know, like Wayne Dyer, mm-hmm. fucking Tony Robbins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I when I was younger, I used to be all about it. I was like, I mean, you know. You got to watch some commercial because they're selling you some like DVDs. But let me just watch this PBS infomercial. (laughs) I'm going to take some of this knowledge. Yeah. They got a mantra like I'm already I'm already connected to the abundance I need. I'm going to remember that (laughs) for free. But it is true. It's true. No, I believe it. I believe it. I feel, and I think that's one of the biggest uh, crimes that we put. People get so disconnected from the abundance that we have, and because it's hit, it's hidden, and it's people want to not share it. But if you, that was one of the things. When I first moved to LA, and I lived in a a comedian hostel, six other comedians. and I was struggling. I had no money. And I would go back and forth from Oregon every six months to renew my food stamp card. Yeah. But I, I would do sets at the improv. And afterwards, instead of going home, I would always walk through the neighborhoods. Yeah. And I would see these rich ass houses and yeah. see these nice cars. And I would just walk around and I'd say to myself, I go, there is a money. There is abundance. It is here and it is for you. You just have to get yours. Mm-hmm. And that really always kept me motivated when I was there. Cause I, oh. I like, I like rich stuff. <laughs> I feel comfortable around it. I like, I like nice Italy. Things. You like nice things. I like <laughs> when I went to Nice. I like going to the Malfi coast. It doesn't, I know some people, it makes them feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Like they don't belong. I never feel that. Way. I love that for you. I Thank love that you. for you. I feel like I wish I could where, feel more. Comfortable. Oh my God. I've been waiting for this is it, truly when I was younger, people would always have issues. My, my, my stepmom and Seth would be like, why are you so fucking bougie? Yeah. And so that, uh, and I, and now I was like, oh, it makes sense now. Now, yeah. <laughs> now it's like, this is just my, how I act. I'm actually living my station now. Yeah. Mother. Almost. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why, like, I do still find myself having some discomfort. I'm trying to interrogate that, Mm -hmm. like, discomfort around people with wealth. Like, that's why I, like, notice people like Ted Sarandos floating by. Like, how are you so well moisturized? You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? That still stands out to me because that feels like there's a distance, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I know they all poop and pee, just like all of us. But, you know. It is something I still kind of think about. I think it, it, it might even be connected with some of this, you know, setting up my business stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like this, like whatever tension or anxiety I feel around, like getting my little business shit together. Um, all of that. Maybe I need an assistant. I think you do. I've been <gasps> big into assistants and stuff for people. I've been yeah. telling Fortune Feimster forever. Good an assistant. You're so you're so well. You do so well. You should have an assistant. She might by now. I don't know. <laughs> But she's like, I'm Midwest and I'm a worker. And yeah. Da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah. But then you tweet about being on the phone with for, with Delta for three hours. Yeah. That sounds like a waste of your fucking time. A hundred percent. Yeah. I agree. Oh, this is good. This is good message for me to hear. But that's one of my goals. And then, and then, pitch, whoop, and then pitching for myself. Okay. Yeah. I love that. How much time did we, I've lost track of time. Well, I felt like, see, I knew it. It felt like it. It felt like it. I, you're easy to talk with. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, I also want to get pregnant. <gasps> wow. I know. I've been doing IVF. I haven't talked about it. I've talked about it some. I'm going to talk about it more. I'm probably going to do a self-help me uh, show that talks about fertility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't know, guys. We're going to try to inject some embryos in this old little baby oven here. Okay. At some point. <laughs> All right. I'm excited for your journey. 
<laughs> I just rubbed my uterus. Yeah, you should feel like there were cookies in there. Like, yeah. That's another goal of mine with my uh, fiance. You want to be a mother. I would like to be a mother. I think I would be a, a fun mother and a good mother. I think so. Yeah. Maybe a couple, couple little ones. That'd be nice. We'll see. Everyone who has small children are always like, don't do it. You know, like, no. It's like they're like in the desert trying to find an oasis. <laughs> don't do it. Some people are like that, and I always feel like they're assholes. Uh, <laughs> I know, a little bit, right? Where they're like, just like, what do you, you chose to have the kid, first so, of all. Yeah. So you knew you were going to get up early and stuff. And not sleep, yeah. And for me, I mean, I, I prefer being a father than a husband, I found out. Uh, yeah. From my two times of trying it, I'm like, I like taking care of my son. I like being there for my son. I like, I mean, watching Malcolm be kind to people and be nice and be confident and dancing yeah. at this wedding is like, there's no award or no like show I've ever done. That's made me feel like that. Yeah. And or his high school graduation, just that feeling of uh, the times where I was like, man, I'm so worried about this kid. And I don't know um, if I'm even doing the right job or if I'm doing right. a good job and then this, be there at his graduation and have that all full circle moment of all the decisions that I had made. There was nothing like that. Yeah. And I love being a parent. I love my little baby and I love my, Aww. my big baby. So I always, I think, you know, there's people who, Custom fit for everything. There's some people who yeah. it would not be good. They wouldn't be good at yeah, 100%. it. Yeah, hundred percent. But there's some people who, me in particular, I think my life would be so different if yeah. I didn't have kids. I think I would have been floating around. Yeah, I might be working in stock room with some grocery store somewhere yeah. because I didn't have the motivation to really do anything for myself until I had my son. Right. So I I love being a parent. Oh, I love that. Thank you. I'm going to just feed off that energy, that organized business energy, and that I, like, I love being a parent energy. Yeah, it was fun. And when he smiled at me, and just Aww. says, dad, dad, you know, it's great. It feels, it's, a back, it's a little battery. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, since we spoke about most of the things in a haphazard way, it really was a beautiful <laughs> conversation I'm uh glad. but we reached the point where i start to land the plane and i ask you just for a little piece of advice a little pearl of wisdom maybe something from your uh being in politics maybe something that you learned from your relationship with your mom maybe something uh that you learned from dealing with the pandemic or from your new show i don't really care what it is just something to help our getting better community get better yeah. Um, my little pearl of wisdom I like to share is I've been thinking a lot about the breakups thing and sort of like my relationships and all the relationships that I've gone through to finally get to a place where I found someone that I was really compatible with, you know? And I have to say that I stayed too long in so many relationships. Mm -hmm. I stayed way too long with boyfriends, just it shouldn't have gone that long. And so I think the turning point for me was realizing that um, sometimes when you keep on choosing the wrong person, it's you. Mm -hmm. And I, my picker was a little off. And I, I, there was a turning point where I said, oh, my instincts are bad. So maybe next time, whatever my instincts say, let me do the opposite. And sure enough, I started dating men who treated me better. <laughs> Oh, you did like that episode of Seinfeld where George Costanza started doing the opposite of everything and then he ended up dating a beautiful woman. I mean, I'm not saying they got that from me, mm -hmm. but uh, this, that, that, does predate, like it, yeah. that does predate when I did this. But, but it sounds like they stole it from you. I know. But I mean, <laughs> it is one of those things. And, and, and also to just like when you date someone, it's like going on a, like an interview for a job. Like mm -hmm. it's not that they're just judging you to decide if you're great. Mm -hmm. You're also deciding if they're good for you. And I, for the longest time, did not know how to do that. Yeah. I think that was one of my biggest issues. Right. That, um, that it almost became a thing that attracted me to them if I had to prove my self-worth to them, prove Ugh. my value to them, and show them how good I was. And now 
I don't feel that way. And that's I feel that, Ron. Right. And that's beautiful for me to just be like, I'm happy with me. Either we match or we don't. Yes. But I don't have to prove myself to anyone. And yes. That's been good for my comedy, for, for all aspects of my life. Uh, but it was certainly hard choices and hard decisions, especially when we have baby, you know, mm -hmm. and have a beautiful house and life. And you're like, oh, this looks great, but it doesn't feel right. Yeah. And so I had to make strong choices. And what's best for me is now having people like my mom or stuff being like, man, I'm really proud of you. That's mm -hmm. like, that was strong. Like for you to be able to navigate that and then be kind and to take care of her and your family still and not, um, you know, try to cause any drama or ill will. Yeah. I just like, no, this doesn't work. And now let's try this. Um, you know, super strong decision. I'm proud of myself. Thanks, Jenny. Cheers to you. Yeah. A little sparkling water. Cheers. Oh, I thought you were drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Matches your outfit. You came full style. Green. Yeah. All green. Uh, Jenny, where can people... As I assume they have fallen in love with you if they did not know you um, where can they continue to pay tribute and follow and support you oh um my website is jennyyang.tv you can follow me on instagram and twitter at jennyyangtv and that's where I'm gonna share about all the shows and touring that I'll be doing and I don't know and in September the Netflix show that I'm acting in the brother's son no, I thought it was a movie. It no, like a it's movie. a show. It's starring Michelle Yeoh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eight episodes, baby. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> it's fun. That sounds like it could be I a beautiful stunts. springboard for you. I, I, I hope it'll be good. Yeah. I hope it'll give me more opportunities, like to act especially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I got to do stunts. Lived out a dream of mine. I like work with like the John Wick stunt people, oh, the Creed cool. stunt people. I mean, listen, that'll be a whole other, that's a later episode. That we should cover all that. I'll come back, promote the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to. Yeah, so JennyYang.tv and at JennyYangTV. Perfect. Jenny, I enjoy talking with you. You're so fun and enjoyable. This is the Chinese. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you guys for listening. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out our last episode right over here. Bam! Or perhaps a video picked by our overlords at YouTube. Boop. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit it up. Hit it up. Press the button. Press it!